What's up YouTube, Oliver here. Today I'm going to be reviewing Textastic. This is a, a text editor, code editor and markup editor for both iOS and the Mac. The two separate apps, one available on the iOS app store, one on the Mac app store, and they're both $9.99 uh, as of the time of filming this video. The, uh, the iPad app has some very cool features such as direct uploading to an FTP server and also live previews and the Mac version is a very great companion to that. So let's take a look at both of those apps right now. Okay, so um, the first thing that you're presented with when we launch the Mac app of Nextastic, you'll get the new document um, browser. So if we just create a new document in the iCloud drive for Textastic, and the benefit of doing that is it's really easy to open the file in the iPad app, which we'll have a look at soon. Um, but because it's obviously all linked over iCloud Drive, it is a great companion. Um, so basically, it's a very, very simple application. There's not many tools. Tab view, so you can just use Command T, make as many tabs as you want. And basically, the, the interface is very straightforward. It tells you your line and, your line and column number. Uh, you can select whichever language you want. As you can see, there's a huge host of different languages available. Massive, massive selection, which is great. Um, I find that some of them, the auto completion works really well, others it doesn't seem to be existent, but in terms of your syntax highlighting and everything, it, it is a really useful um, tool, as you can see, though it has one of the largest selections of languages in a, a text editor that I've seen. Um, but basically, the next thing along you've got is your line endings, you've got a text encodings there, um, and then there's like symbols in that section basically it is very straightforward you can just click on the drop down in the menu at the top there if you want to change the name location and so on i mean even the, the file settings up here you've just got um, as you can see quite simple menus there's not a whole load of features in here it is i think the mac version is just mainly a companion to the the ios version but it, it is actually really good at what it does it's simple but it is effective so for example um, let's switch to HTML. Uh, the auto completion is really good. You can also use Emet um, expansion. So just do three paragraphs, use tab. You know, you can expand them. It is really useful. Um, you know, the auto completion does work really well. If we um, come along here, for example, if I uh, do this one in C++, uh, you know, it, it does work really well. The syntax highlighting is nice. It does have a good auto completion, um, certainly for things like web languages like HTML and things like, um, you know, C and C++ does work well. Obviously, I haven't had the time to test them all out, but I have found that uh, Java doesn't seem to have an auto completion. It just depends on the language that you use, but it is really good, um, you know, and it is a handy feature quite straightforward application there's not a whole lot of features to it um, and of course as well once you start to write um, it'll come up down here with your sort of functions and stuff like that in the in the footer there um, okay so let's have a look now at the iPad version okay so this is the uh, iPad version of the app as you can see it has a lot more features than the Mac version it is a really great app on the iPad um, fantastic for, for you know quick code editing on the go so I'll just show you firstly the left hand side here is your sidebar so you've got things like you can open local files which are stored on the device obviously you can open things from iCloud and the default location is the Textastic iCloud Drive folder if you go to open that just launches an iCloud Drive browser so you can get any files from there if we click on the little kind of globe icon here it brings up a file transfer so you can have local files in iCloud so it lets you do a two-way transfer so you could transfer files from the iPad up to a server so you can transfer to an FTP or F SFTP great for if you're editing web pages on the go you can also use Dropbox WebDAV and so on and that lets you transfer between those services the next icon along is you can connect to WebDAV that way Obviously, question marks, your help, and then you've got some settings down here. It lets you just, you know, alter a number of things there. So that is quite handy. Um, we can then hide the sidebar and want to work on the code. Again, you can just tap on files and that will show it. You can tap on the next icon along, which is your recent files, and you can quickly switch between things that you've been working on. 
the uh, what looks like a pair of glasses if you tap on that it gives you a preview so this generally works with um, web files like uh, HTML and that kind of thing you can it's blank at the moment but I'll show you that in a moment you can it'll give you a preview of what you've done you've also got um, remote which will allow you to connect to a web server you can just type an address in there and so on the next thing along is you can do your find and replace um, search and so on you've got settings there so you can you know further kind of narrow down your search your symbols which when you've got a lot of code there it'll show you like a map of all of your sort of classes and functions and so on um, you've got your file properties so you can say you know what the syntax definition is your encoding and so on uh, choose the file name up that way and just looking at the syntax definitions here you can see I'll try and go through so you can see them there's a huge selection just like on the Mac version a huge selection of different syntax definitions that you can use there which is absolutely excellent for an iPad app and it is really handy to do this on the go um, I'll put this on HTML just to, for a demonstration for now right so we're on HTML and the next one along is just the share icon so you can obviously choose to send as an attachment email and so on so if we want to come into the editor here we we'll just tap in and you'll notice it shows on the top corner there on the right hand side your line and column and as you start to type that will update um, you have a keyboard and then the top row of the keyboard are all your special symbols so what you can actually do is just if you tap on these because obviously they're commonly used sort of symbols but they wouldn't be on an iPad keyboard so say I want to use the first is just tabs and backspace the second brackets and so on so say I wanted to use that curly bracket all I do is I just drag to the top corner or if I want to use the square bracket drag to the bottom corner I want that brace you just you just tap the corner of the the button that you want so if you want to use a percent symbol you want to use a colon really really easy way when you're, you're doing lots of code because you need these symbols all the time great way to access them okay so um, just to show you how it works if we're actually doing some typing so let's just uh, put something together so and you notice it does come up with your auto completion it automatically closes tabs as well which is great uh, you know and again as you can see it basically will do all that for you you can also do emet abbreviations as well and again it's just that top button on the left which you just tap in the middle if you want to do a tab and then just to show you how the preview works you tap on the glasses if you want to have a look go to local and you can see there hello world in a paragraph really really great way of being able to quickly um, make web documents i love the ipad app so useful and um, i mean there's nothing i've found like it out there nothing as good as that really useful for quickly doing edits to you know web pages and you know your code files on the go and it's great that it links up to your ftp service you can even upload your files straight away very handy features there again you've got your share sheet that you can open in safari and so on and you can also open up the console if you're doing some debugging of, of say JavaScript or something like that. Okay, well, thanks for watching this video. I hope you've been able to see they are very useful apps. Uh, I particularly do like the iPad version, especially if you've got an iPad Pro and um, you know, some really great features. It's amazing what you can do now on a mobile device. And a big thanks to Alexander, the developer of Textastic, for providing the codes to enable me to bring this video to you. I hope I've been able to answer all your questions, but as always, if you do have any questions, please leave a comment. If you like the video, please thumbs up, and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this coming your way very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.